Greetings, everyone. I'm going to share with you what at first might seem like a simple word game, but it's actually a powerful language skill development activity. I'll explain how you can introduce this to your students and organize it in a way that will make it most effective. You may be familiar with the basic concept. It's sometimes called odd man out. We have a list of four words and identify which word is somehow different from the other three words. For example, apple, banana, carrot, orange. So an obvious odd word is carrot because it's a vegetable, but the others are fruits. Now, here is the real reason that it's a good English language uh, activity. If done correctly, the students will be able to learn to use some important expressions that they'll need beyond our ESL classrooms. While playing this game, we want them to use expressions like these. I'm sorry, what did you say? Can you repeat that? Please say it again slowly. Let me see. Oh, I got it. Oh, I know. That's right. Now it's your turn. Now, here are my recommendations for how we can make this activity more than just a game. So recommendation one, put the members in small groups of three or four students, but don't give them one list of words. If you just give them all the same list of words, it'll end up being just a kind of vocabulary game with little conversation skills involved. Instead, we give each member of the group different lists of words. For example, we have a group of three students, student A, student B, and student C. Here is how their papers would look. So they cannot see their partner's papers. This is one way that this is more than just a vocabulary game. So student A starts reading number one, then B has number two, and C has number three. Notice how this way it involves listening and pronunciation. In fact, look at uh, number four on student A's paper. If we just read it, nose, mouse, eye, leg, it's obvious that mouse is odd. But if we are just hearing student A read it, we might hear the word mouth instead of mouse if A doesn't pronounce it clearly. Now here's recommendation two. Include brief introductory exercises to demonstrate how to do the activity and the important expressions to use. To make this more than just identifying the odd word and make it more interactive, after the group members say which word is odd, they must also explain why. For example, Student A reads number one, mountain, river, sea, ocean. Student B says mountain is odd and then gives a reason because the others are water. Now I'll show you a weak introductory exercise and then I'll contrast that with a strong and effective one. So here's uh, the weak one. So the exercise is read the dialogue with two partners. So student B uh, starts, which of these four words is odd? Cat, lion, dog, fish. Student A, fish is odd because it lives in the water, but the others live on land. Student C, I think lion is odd because the others are common pets, but a lion isn't. So there are a couple features that make this uh, weak introductory, uh, introductory exercise. First, the students will often merely just read the dialogue mindlessly. To get them to actually think about the dialogue so that they can internalize how to do the activity, we can have them fill in the blanks individually before reading it together. For example, a little better exercise. So here's exercise one. 
fill in the blanks of this dialogue using words from the box. There's the box, and then student B starts, which of these four words is odd? Cat, lion, blank, fish. And so the students would look in the box up there and choose dog. Student A says fish is odd because it lives in the, we look up there and it says oh, we can choose water, but the others live on land. So this way, uh, then we have exercise two, where after they've individually filled in uh, those blanks, then with a partner or two partners, they read the dialogue to each other. So, you know, we've improved the exercise a bit by having them fill in the blanks. However, we can make it even better. As I mentioned earlier, when they do this activity, they have an opportunity to use some common expressions that will be useful beyond our classroom. Again, you know, I'm sorry, what did you say? Can you repeat that? So these are all the expressions that we would like to include when they're doing this activity. So here is how we can get, uh, we can help them see not only how to do the activity, but also how they can use these important expressions when they do it. So here's the best exercise. So again, we have exercise one, fill in the blanks of this dialogue using words from the box. So, so this time student B starts, which of these four words is blank? And cat, lion, dog, fish. And of course, they're going to look at the top and they will choose odd. Okay, then here's one of those expressions we want them to use. So A says, I'm sorry, can you that? And so they look and choose repeat. So I'm sorry, can you repeat that? And then B, sure, cat, lion, dog, fish. And then C, using one of those expressions again, let me see, oh, I, and then choose from the box, oh, I got it. Okay, so that way, by having them fill in like this, we have them not seeing how they can use those expressions in a very, very natural way. So, after filling in the blanks, uh, their exercise one will look like this. Then they do exercise two in which they read their dialogues to two partners. Now, here is my third recommendation for how to make this simple game an effective language learning activity. Recommendation three, include clear directions and do a model for the whole class. So each pay, uh, student's paper will have two steps for directions. Uh, this is how the top of student A's paper will look. So step one, circle the strange words each group uh, uh, in the list below. So that's the first thing they do individually. They go through their paper and just circle the strange words. Then we're gonna put them in groups and they'll do step two, read the list to your partners. They will say which word is strange and why. Listen to your partner's uh, lists and say which word is strange and why. So after they have finished step one, or putting them in groups of threes, it's a good idea to model the first one. So we can choose a, a student A in one part of the room, a B in another part, and perhaps C in the back of the room. Student A reads number one, so the whole class can hear, and B and C respond using the expressions they practiced in the introductory exercises. Now, they know how to carry out the activity and how to incorporate the important expressions as they do it. So now we put them in groups of threes and they do step two of the activity. Now this brings us to my fourth recommendation. These are the last two steps in the activity. So recommendation, customize the activity with the final exercises. Here are the directions for the final two steps. These are how we can make this a lot of fun, creative, and even memorable for the students. 
So step three, with your partners, write some lists of words. Three words should be similar and one strange. And then step four, after they finish step three, of course, step four, leave your partners and make new groups of three or four students. Take turns reading your lists, telling which words are strange and telling why they are strange. I guarantee you that you will hear a lot of laughing as the three partners work together to come up with lists in step three. As I said, these are customized. They tend to write things that are especially relevant to their classmates. For example, things about their teachers, their school, uh, themselves, etc. These are lists that I could never have come up with. Then, when they form their new groups to do step four and read their lists, you can see the focus and interest they have on each other. In this step, there is even more laughing. Here is an example of what I once overheard as a group was doing step four. Alex starts by reading one of the lists that his group uh, in step three had written. Here are the names of four classmates. Which one is special? Julie, Maya, Irina, Kyle. Oh, could you repeat that again? Sure. Julie, Maya, Irina, Kyle. I know, Julie is special. Okay, why? Because she is not Asian, but the other three are. That's right. But there is another one. Let me see. Oh, I got it. Kayo is special. She is the only one who knows how to drive. Okay, then everybody laughed when they heard that. You got it. I know another one. Maya is special. Really? How come? She is the only one who finished her homework today. And there was a big eruption of laughter when they said that. Now it's your turn, Katya. So, I hope you can see how you can make what seems like a simple game into an activity that can really help students improve their language skills and have a lot of fun while they're doing it. By the way, if you'd like to use this activity with your students, I'll include a link in the notes below where you can go to download the exercises. Thank you for watching.